Hey everyone, welcome back to Double Zero Garage and today we're going to make a start on the charger. Right, so this particular charger is an automatic. So it has two pipes that come off the bottom of the radiator and go straight to the gearbox to help with cooling. So I've already disconnected those. There's one there, you can just see all at the very bottom there, you can see it's disconnected. And there's one here on the other side, which you can see is disconnected as well. And the reason I've done that is just to make life that little bit easier because I don't know whether they'll actually disconnect or whether they'll fall apart. But they didn't fall apart, they unbolted or they unscrewed properly. So we're all happy with that. So we're ready to go and start stripping everything out. And just in case you're wondering, the um, nuts that holds or the socket parts that hold those radiator pipes together on the bottom of the radiator, there are five eighths. It's the, uh, the size spanner that I use to undo those, just in case you're wondering if you've never done one before or you've got one to do. So we've got the, obviously the radiator takeout. Now I've already loosened a couple of things just to make life for that a little bit easier, but obviously I'll talk you through that. So first thing I'm going to do is try and get this top radiator hose off. So just going to loosen the uh, Jubilee clip or clamp. And then, now I'm not too bothered if I do any damage to this hose getting it off because I do have a new hose to go on both the top and the bottom. So that's the, the hose off there on that one. And then the bottom hose is just about pretty much loosened, ready to come off as well. Just gonna take that back a little bit more to get that one off. As I said, I'm replacing everything on, uh, on the cooling side. So it's a new top hose, a new bottom hose, new radiator, thermostat, water pump. These do look as though they've been on here for a very long time. It looks as though the radiator's original, so that would have been on there since 1968. I can't really blame it if it's uh, starting to get blocked inside or fall apart somewhere. Sometimes these jubilee, jubilee clumps do stick a little bit. That's the clump back out of the way. And that's the pipe off. So that's the radiator hoses off, the transmission cooling pipes are off. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see from there, but down the side of the radiator, on both sides, there's two, what work out to be the equivalent 
of 11 millimeter bolts. So we're just gonna take those out. either side obviously I'll be using the same bolts to put the new radiator back in as you can see they're a little bit on the rusty side so we'll give those a bit of a clean before we put them back in to hold the radiator in place that top one in lightly for a minute or two and get these bottom ones out Okay, so that's the second bottom one out. It's just this one at the top. on this side to come out So that's all out. The radiator is disconnected completely. It's unbolted. In theory, that should just lift out from the front of the car. Let's just move you around a little bit. And we'll see if we can get this to lift out from the front of the car. Yep. Right, so that's the radiator out. Now there are a couple of things on the radiator that I do need to take off. So see if I can flip you around and show you those bits. Now ignore what looks like the damp patches, it's not a leak. That's where I was messing up with the water and as you can see I was spraying WD-40 on the transmission pipes to get in those. Now these two fittings, that one there 
and that one there all going to have to come out because they've got to be bolted onto the new radiator for it to go in and connect up with everything so in order to get to the water pump which is that there I'm going to take the fan off that fan belt and uh, and then that should let we get in to the water pump so there's just those four bolts there come off now they're a half inch bolt or 13 millimeter if you don't have AF uh, sockets by the looks of this two of these bolts have washers on and two don't now I'm assuming that they'll all need to have washers but at some point they've lost them so we'll replace those washers and we'll put the fan back on when everything else is back in hoping this is just going to pull straight off and it does oops caught you there And as you can see, that's the radiator's out, the fan's off, the fan belt's next, then this pulley, and then we can get to the water pump. I think that pulley just, we might be able to just slide that off. Will it, will it slide off? Yes, it will. So we'll get that pulley out. Take that belt off, or is it just that later? So, the next thing to come out is the water pump. And we'll just go and get some WD-40 to pop onto that. So I know they're going to move without snapping because the last thing I want is for them to snap in the front of the engine. Right, so the water pump bolts have been soaked in WD-40 for a little while. Let's go ahead and see if I can Get those out hopefully easily. I'm always a little suspicious when one starts coming out straight away. So that's the first one out. Hopefully, the rest will be as easy. Oh, this one, she, she's tight. Let's inch these out a bit at a time. Oh, this one's coming out easier. Let's leave that one there for a minute and get on this bottom one. Oh, the bottom one's loose. <coughs> There's only that other one that's a little tight. I'm hoping that one's going to come out okay. What we'll do is we'll tighten it back up a little bit just as if we need to clean the threads off. And then we'll take it back out again. 
This is just easing it out. So if the threads are clogged up with dirt, it cleans them a little bit. And that seems to be loosening off quite well. see in there or not if it'll pick that up and focus on it but the threads are a little bit clogged up with dirt which is what was probably making them a bit difficult to get out but of course they will be cleaned before they go back in unless of course the new water pump has come with nice new shiny bolts which would be nice if it had Threads of all four bolts are exactly the same. So in theory, it should just be a case of hitting this with this rubber knocking stick. See if we can loosen that off, and then that should pop off in the hand. As you can see, it's not clogged up, there's no rust in there, but we'll put a new one anyway because I think that could well be the original 1968 water pump. So we'll put the new one on anyway as we'll have it. to the water out there. There's certainly no, nothing clogged up in there, which is perfect. Oh, it's nice and clean inside. appear to be any damage to that at all so once the housing here is cleaned up and get this old gasket off it it's ready to put the new water pump on film removing the original thermostat housing and the old thermostat purely down to the fact that the camera ran out of battery however I did get a film putting the new thermostat in and the old thermostat housing back on so you will get to see that in reverse uh, removal procedure is just a simple way of doing the reverse of putting the new one back in so you will get to see part of that uh, that'll be coming in part two because obviously this video is starting to get a little bit long now and I don't want to bore you all to death with watching it ramble on until the whole job's done so I'm going to break it down into three parts part one is the bit you've watched so far part two will be removing the th the aircon pump because that was a trial in itself which hopefully you'll enjoy next time around and then part three will be the rebuild of putting everything back together which surprisingly doesn't take as long as you think that it would and we might even get together get the car started hopefully fingers crossed so we'll call that a day for this particular section of the video, so that's the end of part one. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please like uh, by clicking on the little thumbprint, the little um, thumbs up sign. Ring the bell for future notifications of any of the videos that I put up. And uh, please subscribe. There's an awful lot of you that have been watching and an awful lot of you that are sending me comments that I'm responding to. And you're not subscribing. Why wouldn't you subscribe when there's things here like Dodge Chargers and El Caminos? So I'll subscribe away and any comments you want to make, leave them in the details below. And obviously my, uh, my email address, 00garage at gmail.com, will be in the description. 
below as well. So I'll leave that one there for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time with part two of the cooling system on the charger. Bye for now. Thank you.